Hey, what is up everybody? My name is Rahul and in this video we'll be learning about GraphQL through this room. So I'll be telling you a bit more as compared to this room and explaining the things as we go about it. So I don't do bug bounty much but trust me many a times I have come across GraphQL instances and it is extremely extremely necessary for you guys to know what GraphQL is and how you can interact with it and see if you can look for any vulnerabilities. Now, what is GraphQL? So many people confuse it and I too confused it for an API. But no, it is not an API, but it is merely a thing that lets you interact with an API. So GraphQL is just a sort of carrier that can help you interact with the API and we'll be understanding how and we'll be taking a practical demonstration as well. So for example, you have a database and the database has some objects and this object is called serial. As you can see here, this is our serial uh, database. Now there are only two. So we have a file over here, but in the in, in a real world scenario, we'll have a database. Now the database will have many, many uh, objects. And here you can see that we have an object called serial. Now what you have is in order to have in order to query your database through GraphQL, you'll need what is called a schema. So here you can see the schema has been defined. Now the schema, as you can see, it accepts called it, it accepts something called a serial. And that serial is defined here in the root variable, which is var. Now, as you can see, let's just leave this part aside and you'll see that it ex accepts something called a serial. So we'll have to enter a serial and it accepts a parameter by the name of name and that parameter should be a string it can be an int uh, float but here as you can see it has been defined as string now you'll see that there are three parameters to serial the first is name sugar and protein but what it will accept is just string by the name um, by name and it can output either of the three things as you supply so let's take an example here it gives us an example that given an object dog, what is the parameter name and how do you care, query the weight of Shiba Inu? So let's just take notepad here and let's just see how we can go about it. Now there is an object by the name of dog. So we know that there is an object. The GraphQL instances or the query begins with curly brackets. brackets. So here you'll see that we have a dog. We have an object by the name of dog and it has a parameter of name. Now, since it had a parameter of name, so what we will be doing is it will accept a parameter name. And since it is a name, we can expect it to be string type. We are just guessing it, we do not know, but we'll see how in real world scenario will come to know about it. And we have to query the weight and the name is Shiba Inu. So let's read it again. Given the object dog, what with the parameter name, how would you query the weight of Shiba Inu? Now let's just type in Shiba Inu and let's just close the parenthesis and what we have to do is we have to query the weight. Now this is how the things happen in a real world scenario. So let's just hit enter and see. So here we'll see that it is expecting uh, what we are querying for is an object by the name of dog. So there is, an, there is a schema defined by the name of dog and it accepts a parameter called Shiba Inu. And once we have given it what we are looking for, there could be very, um, there could be various attributes dedicated to dog. And what we are looking for is a dog by the name of Shiva Onu and we are looking for weight. Now, had it told us about its height, we could also have queried the height or age and lots of lots of things. So let's take an example here. So here we are given the dogs, as you can see, there is a there is a parameter defined or there is a schema defined by the name of ping and it accepts uh, a field of ip and it gives an output as well so but in the real world scenario will not be given this so how do you go about that so let's just see how we can do it there is something called an introspection query so what that does is so for example you do not know so for example you are in a war but you do not know how many soldiers are there in the opposite army so 
but you need to have an idea about it so this is something similar to bug bounty so you do not know what the schema is of the opposite vulnerable system here you are given the schema because this is a test room but you'll not be given that in the real world scenario you might be you might not be so in that case th there comes something called an introspection query so in that query what you can do is you can use that query to find out all the parameters or the schema and the query and the feeds that are there in the vulnerable system or in the website so let's just see introspection query graphql and here you'll see a blog by yesweehack.com and here you'll see this is a very large um, graphql query but we'll see about it and let's just hit execute and here you'll see again that there is something called there is an object and its name is ping it accepts argument called ip and again as you can see the type uh, has been defined it is a square scalar quantity and it accepts a string sorry the and the ip type as you can see the argument which was ip it is a scalar quantity and it is a type string so here you'll see that we have got whatever was written in the docs so we didn't have to have docs but what we know is that it accepts uh, an IP which is string type and it gives an output as well but what if we didn't know that it gives an output or there is a field by the name of output what could we do then also what if we had no idea that there is an IP parameter as well so how would we go about that so let's just see there is an autocorrect feature here so let's just uh, what it does is it accepts IP and we know that it is a string quantity so we'll have we'll be doing it within double quotes let's type in localhost and we need to have a nested parenthesis and let's just type in i now this is being auto filled for me because the docs have been defined but what if if i were to just type in i suppose i because i know that the, this is a way of trying to brute force i could have typed in a b c and suppose i type in i just to save some time as you can see i did not match anything it says did you mean ip so here we can get the parameter name as well so we know that one of the parameters is ip again you can try to brute force the next one but here i'll not try to do that because that will consume time and i have to show you command injection here so as you can see this is temporarily down no not down because i typed it incorrectly okay so localhost and as you can see it works so what if I, I were to type in a semicolon and type in who am i oh sorry let's just not type who am i let's type in alps as you can see this is how we get command injection right with the help of um, a vulnerable query so you can also get a reverse shell out of it there is uh, let's just type in payload all the things reverse shell and let's just take this one Two, three, four, and ten point nine point one four four dot one one five. Before I hit enter, let's just see. I have cleared it, and let's just wait. I'm sorry about that. I should have typed in. I should have opened up a listener. And as you can see, I get a reversal back. So thank you guys. This is it for the video.